Happy Floss Tube Friday, friends. My name is Carrie. This is Tiger Lily Designs, and welcome to Floss Tube number 100. Yay! Welcome. Can cue the confetti cannons. I don't have any, but if I did, boom, boom, boom. Are you excited? I'm so excited. We made it to 100. It's just going to be a regular floss tube, but there's going to be a little bonus to it because you can't have a episode 100 and not have some fabulous giveaways. So I did pull a little curated collection of a few things to add to the giveaways. So as I love to do, let's just run through a little table of contents, which really means I'm going to scan the table and tell you what we're going to talk about today. So I have a stitching finish, which is exciting. I have a couple whips, whips that I worked on stitching wise this week. There's a lot in the um, department of knitting. So there will be that segment. And again, there's the giveaways in the middle. And then I'm going to have a little Tiger Lily shop update somewhere along the way. So as I love to do, we're just going to dive right into the stitching. So I asked you guys last week when I felt like there might have been more knitting content than there was floss tube content. The comments were overwhelming. And really, truly, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to comment. I tried to heart them all. I read them all. Um, so I really appreciate you taking the time to, to let me know because I was struggling with the fact whether I should separate my floss tube in my knitting podcast. Um, but everybody, the overwhelming response was keep them all together. I'm a multi-crafter too. And for the few that weren't multi-crafters, they're like, no problem. It's easier. I just skipped that part or left in the middle or whatever, which is perfect. Because honestly, that's really what I want to do is I want to just keep everything because I do lots of things. It's not just stitching and knitting. It's quilting. And I have my spinning wheel that I brought out. I haven't spun on it yet, but I have spinning and hooking and making. I'm going to do punch needle. Like I just do all the things in the world of making and crafting. And I just feel like bringing it all in one episode is maybe help you enable, see something new you haven't seen before, but also it's just fun. Um, so there's that. There's the PSA on that. So anyway, we're going to just dive right into the stitching and then maybe we'll segue into some of the hundred giveaways that I had. Just a small collection. Don't, I, I didn't go overboard. Um, I'm going to save that for my three-year floss anniversary in August. That's what I'm going to go overboard, let's be honest. But today, I do have a stitching finish. So we've seen her a while. I did iron her and put her on the board. Oh, let's put her over here so we can get up nice, close, and personal. So this is Miss Ann Richardson. This is my birthday start for this year. This is my sister's sampler, age um, nine and Richardson age nine. You can see there's a name missing at the bottom. So that's the only thing that I haven't decided on. I'm not, I always change things and make it my own. So I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to put my name, a family member's name or a quote. I love to pull like, um, poetry type quotes. I feel like the last two samplers, that's what I've done is I've, you know, found a quote that spoke to me and kind of, I felt like it could hold hands with the sampler I was putting it on versus the name. So I did that with both Mary Morgans and Harriet Hay. Um, they both have quotes on them. So this one, I just haven't decided. I don't want to put like a birthday quote, but that's kind of what this is. So whether it's my name or pink, because it's pink. Um, so I'm still TBD on that. But the stitching from the chart is done. So that's exciting. I stitched her on 36 count x baby sheep using um, the called for Vicky Clayton silks. So I'm super excited. So what this means, if you've been watching, you know that once I make the final decision and actually, you know, just spend the night, it will only take me a day, I'm sure, to put in the letters or the words or the quotes or whatever I do, um, then I'm going to be doing my framing tutorial. So I did my DIY frame on Miss Harriet Hay and um, the giant rose pear one. Yes, I did custom frames with the miter saw. Zzz, zzz, miter saw. So um, I am going to do a full tutorial of how I do it. Right or wrong, I don't know, but that's how I do it. And so I did to tell you guys that this is the this is the piece that I was going to bring you along and teach you how I measure, how I actually use the power tools. Don't be scared. I mean, it is danger, danger. Um, 
but it's okay, slow and steady, and you won't cut your fingers off. But the the bigger question is, I had a lot of questions about how do I measure because there's the in, we're going to talk about the framing thing anyway. Framing. So she's coming. That's the moral of the story. So step one was finishing the stitch, and I did. So I'm super excited about that. So that was my stitch finish this week. Now I did work on the Remember Me sampler from Liz Matthews a little bit. I did some fill in work, so it's not even worth me pulling it out. It's actually still sitting by my stitchy chair. I was like. Eh. I'll save it for next time. Hopefully next time. We'll see. But um, she's close. She is close. And I can't wait to get her finished. But in the meantime, I felt like I needed to pull out one of the whips from the library that's been hanging around for a while. So I went there and I kind of perused my library. I love being able to look at my um, library tags and be like, oh, this is. So what we are looking at today is Miss Lucy Calcutt. This is by just stitching along. I started this on July 1, 2022. So it's been a hot minute. And this is for Handmade by Sarah W's. This was her birthday style start that we worked, that we stitched together. Now hers is done. She's fantastic. Um, hers is beautiful. She did some changes. It's in the back corner of her floss tube. So if you haven't watched Handmade by Sarah W, pause what you're doing, click in the buttons. I will link her down below, but go see, and you will see this beauty finish. Now I am nowhere near finished, but slow and steady. There is no race. Um, but this is what I'm talking about. This is Miss Lucy Calcutt, 1826. So I pulled her out for two days of work. Now this, I am using all the called for DMCs, which I have here in my floss keeper, which I love. I love my floss keepers because they slide right in the back of a project keeper bonkers so that way i just stay super i love being organized right so i did pull out miss lucy like i said for two nights it was mainly um fill in work or easy stitch don't have to reference the chart work but hey that's okay i'll show you what i've worked on here here she is i'm not gonna bother bringing the board over so what have i worked on i worked on windows yes all the windows. So the windows are not only in white. Oh, let me see. Hold on. I got my tracker card. There's really not much to my tracker card, but it is important for me to tell you guys what I'm fabric I'm using. I'm using 18 count covered bridge by LFA linens. So yes. So this girl measures 281 by 380. So she's affectionately one of my big girls. Um, back to the stitching shall we so i did work on some of the windows so you can see maybe this it's a, it's a rainy day so the lighting isn't awesome here in mount vernon but that's okay so the the windows are like a white it's kind of like this white that the basket is that you can barely see it but you still have to stitch it so i did do some of the white stitching and then i outlined it in the gray black window pain color and then I did work some more along this line here again both times I picked it up I was like I don't want to look at the chart what can I look at and just keep stitching so those are the two areas that I chose to stitch on but I got a little bit of progress and that's okay so a little bit slow and steady and maybe one day I will have a beautiful Miss Lucy now Sarah changed her house to blue it is gorgeous um but you can see I've got tons of motifs left to do. So she is nowhere near the finish line, but that's okay one day. So let me shuffle around and come back. So we're gonna dive right into the 100 episode giveaways because they're stitching related. And so before I switch gears and go into all the knitting stuff that's on this side of the table, I thought, let's just dive in to the fun. So. One, I'm going to have two, three or four giveaways. Three or four giveaways today celebrating Floss Tube episode 100. Now, I do have a ton more episodes because I did 12 days of Stitch Miss for two years, three years, three years. I've done one day was or one year was 24 one and then two two years of 12 days of stitch mess so none of those count plus i have tutorials on framing and finishing and pillow finish and all the things so there's tons more episodes but just plain old plain jane what floss tubes this is episode 100 so that's exciting i felt like it needed to mark we needed to mark it a little bit so 
the first giveaway, what you're going to do to be able to enter in the giveaways is there's going to be four giveaways and you need to make sure you're a subscriber to the channel. Make sure you like the video and you comment down below using the words for each of the giveaways. Um, if you want to win one easy as pie. And then next week. So of course, don't get confused. If there's any like spam bops things that email you message you, whatever, that's not how I do it. It's always that I announce the winners in the next floss tube. So next Friday, I come back every floss tube Friday, just to give you a little update of what I've been working on. And um, so next floss tube Friday is when I will announce the winners of these giveaways. And then you just email me and ship it out. Easy as pie. Hopefully it's most people do it the same way, but I just like to clarify in case there's any confusion. Don't want any confusion, right? Okay. So giveaway number one, perfect timing. What do you think about <laughs> Miss Ann Richardson? I know she was a hard chart to get your hands on there for a little bit. I think you can grab her now most places on Etsy. Um, or your Alan S can definitely reach out to my sister's samplers who are a fantastic set of sisters. Love them so much. But I am going to this prize. You're going to use the word pink. Pink. Because that's why I chose this one really is because it's just the explosion of pink. Um, but you're going to win both the chart and a full unopened set of the Vicky Clayton silks to stitch this beauty. So all you have to do is add your favorite fabric of um, whether it's Ada or linen, whatever. They're both going to be beautiful. And that's how you're going to win that. So that is giveaway pink. Yay. Are you excited? <laughs> okay. So. While I was digging through some of the charts, I was like, you know what? I still have this one too. So I showed you guys this finish last week. This is Harriet Hay. This was my birthday start from the year before. Um, I did just get her fully finished in the frame. I showed you guys that last week, but I thought it was a great way for me to pass along the stash if somebody else wanted to stitch Harriet. Now, unfortunately, I have put away my floss or I would have shared with you my fuller, my full color conversion, but um. I have put that away. So it's just going to be the chart and you're going to use the word brick because that's my favorite part. I mean, not my favorite, but I love the funky red brick on this house. Um, it's actually charted, if you remember, it's charted in two different colors, but because I chose an overdyed, I changed it all to overdyed cottons um, rather than the DMCs or the silks. I forget which silks it was, but I went ahead and changed it all to overdyed. I love the bang for your buck, especially in those areas. Like this was monkey grass. First of all, I love that name of the color, which is why I remember it. It was Weeks Dye Works Monkey Grass. I forget what the red was. I'm thinking it's like ruby slippers, maybe, but it was definitely, I just chose a variegated and stitched it all in one color rather than two different colors. Anyway, you're going to use the word brick if you wanted to win the Harriet Hay chart. So that's exciting. I won't say I saved the best for last, but I have two more prizes to show you guys for the 100 giveaway. So hopefully this is exciting. Now I did go into the vault. Um, as you know, I make project keepers. I have a project keeper club, which is closed right now, but there are there is a wait list as well as there might be a few spots opening up here post April, P April. So make sure you get on the wait list and or check out my Patreon because sometimes I um, double and let my Patreon members know just a little bit early before everybody else. It's just another way of saying thank you for being a Patreon member. Um, but in the meantime, I do have a little small key. I have my own keeper collection, right? Yes. Okay. As a project may baker, I have to have, first of all, I try to keep one for myself. I always keep a keeper club by myself or for myself, but sometimes when I make the special ones, I kind of keep one for myself or more. So I went into the keeper vault. It's not really a vault. It's a shelf in my back room of keepers that, um, either uh, for whatever reason they didn't get sold because I forgot to picture them. Or when I was putting up the listings for that month, I missed that list. Listen, I wear all the hats. I'm the web developer. I'm the web designer. I am the product lister. I'm the shipping department. I'm the marketing department. I'm the social media department. Of course, I'm the production department producing all these sad keepers the cleaning department, the making department, the ordering department, the paying, the finance, all the departments. 
it's a very big hat I wear. Any hoozy, the moral of the story is I went back into the vault, aka the storage room behind me, and was like, there has to be something. What can I pull for the 100K giveaway? And I was floored to find, okay? This might be my favorite mini keeper. Now, if you know, you know, this whole shelf is tulip pink and there's a whole another shelf over on this side. Y'all have never seen this side of the room. <laughs> oh, news spoiler, tangent. Um, I showed you guys on Instagram and I'm gonna bring you along for sure, but this bookcase in full disclosure or in full glory, this bookcase number one, I showed you guys on Instagram this week. I've decided I needed to do a little spring cleaning. We're gonna tangent here for a minute. A little story time. Pause for story time with Tiger Lily. Welcome, grab your tea. Um, we're going to, I'm gonna do a little spring cleaning kind of in between all the things that I have going on. I, you know, sometimes you just, want to clean. Um, I'm not nesting. I just want to clean and kind of like get rid of some of the things after going to that craft store last week and seeing all the things and be like, Ooh, like I can finally donate some of the stuff that I don't use, but somebody else is going to love it. Right. So I've, I've found a place for my unused supplies to go. So I'm super excited about that. So what I've decided in between the days and the works and all the things, I'm going to just slowly work my way around the studio. Yeah. Um, in hopes that one day soon I'll be able to do a studio tour. I know I did a studio tour of my basement studio when I lived in Percival. It was super fun. Gorgeous. Love the studio. This one is bigger, better, and probably more fabulous. So I, I want to share with you behind the scenes. Right now, all you see is usually, 90% of the time, you see my three walls. You don't see, which is my bookcase, there's there's three other bookcases in the room, there's three other cabinets, there's a file camp, there's death, there's machine, like there's a, <laughs> there's a lot to see and I wanna show you guys, just cause it's fun. I love watching a studio tour on, um, on YouTube. But moral of the story is, I started with shelf one, a, because it's open and exposed and, and everything was out in the open. So I did organize. It's not quite as clean as it was, you know, a week ago, but I shared with you. And so then I will move on to shelf two. Now this shelf is three shelves of bathroom and then there's doors. You don't know, but there's doors down here. I don't want to mess with the camera, but this has, so when you have doors, kind of the shelves, you know, behind the cabinet, if you can shut the door, you're good to go. There are two closets in this room. And they're all, they're definitely, unfortunately, I am team like, shut the door. No one can see. I wish I wasn't. There's just so much in that I have a lot of stuff because I like to, because I multi-craft and I do all the things. And so you just never know. My mother's favorite thing to say is it's good stuff. It is good stuff. And so as, as being a maker for, 48 years, 20, yeah, almost 30 years, let's just be honest. Um, I've done a lot of things and I don't, anyway, moral of the story, moral of the story is I went into the vault. This whole segment is supposed to be about giveaways. Let's circle back, shall we? Yay. Tula Pink, she's my favorite. I um, somehow found, I don't know how this has snuck through and just stayed around. I guess it was just serendipitous that was supposed to be here on Floss Tube episode number 100. But without further ado, today's, one of today's giveaways is my favorite. This is one of my favorites. I have one personally. A lot of, um, this was one that I gave, I did, I made, I don't remember how many, 10, 12 of them. To, it was, these were my StitchCon table mates for last year, table mate gifts. And so I found one. <gasps> it's like the secret unicorn. There are no unicorns. Although Tula Pink does have a fantastic unicorn. It's an, it's an out of print chart, uh, out of print fabric. I don't have it. There aren't any unicorns on this one, but there are flamingos and the rose and the fabulous toucan birds and the little crawdads. Oh, so you're going to use the word keeper. K-E-E-P-E-R, keeper. Um, this is my mini keeper. I do sell this pattern if you want to make it yourself. And it gives, tells you how to do the patchwork. 
easy peasy line up your lines you have perfect points every time the way i tell you how to do it it's my favorite um so this is another one of today's hundred giveaway so use the word keeper and you will be entered in to win my favorite i mean i love them all i, have, I can't choose a favorite child but this is one of the this is one of the top ones my tula pink patchwork so that's exciting okay i have one more giveaway. okay friends so the last giveaway actually has to kind of like hold hands with what's going on here in tiger lily here in April. So it's the Make With Tiger Lily and I'm doing a Make With Me project. I haven't quite figured out the timeline and the consistency of the Make With Me. We're just taking it as we go, but the April Make With Me project I'm super excited about. It is the Herringbone Mini Project Bag. What makes this bag so special? A, it's our gateway into being able to make a keeper together. So I'm excited for that. This is the one where we're going to learn some zipper skills, some binding skills, some sew with foam skills, quilting on the foam, all the things. And the great thing about the mini um, herringbone bag is it slides into the back pocket of the keeper, kind of like I showed you guys that before. Anyway, so this is the this is the prototype I showed you maybe two weeks ago as the introducing the Make With Me kit, which is great. Good news is, spoiler, um, I ordered the fabric, the bolts and bolts and bolts of fabric are coming. And because of the way bolts are shipped and counted, there's a handful of these projects left on my website. I will link them down below. So you still have time here in the next couple days to add one of these, there's not a lot. And the essential kits are almost all gone. But the uh, the original kits, are there's still a handful left. So if you wanna go grab one. So this weekend, I had a working weekend, meaning um, I made another one. Why did I make another one? Well, when I make a PDF sewing pattern, I include a ton of pictures. That's how I learn. I learn visually. Um, and so I, I in probably include more pictures than you need. Let's just be honest. So I had to make yet another one to be able to take pictures along the way, step by step the whole way so that I can write the PDF that's going to be included in the kit. So this is the one I made. They're all the same, right? Conceptually, same project line or same fabric line. That's exciting. It's just different binding and different um, orientation of the herringbone. So anyway, that's what I did this past weekend. Also this weekend, what came in, we're getting to the giveaway part. Don't worry. Um, I am so excited about this Make With Tiger Lily concept. There are a ton of ideas. And if you have an idea of something you want to make with me, please DM me or message me or put it in the comments down below. I've got my own running list of the make with me's that are going to be coming up here in 2024, but I love for you to share with me what else you want to make. Of course, the keepers coming. We talked about that. Um, but I was like, well, if we're going to be making with Tiger Lily here in the future, we had to make it fun, right? So I ordered myself and I did it. So I did a custom design make with Tiger Lily kit. And it's got all these cute little like um, cross stitch sewing machine, hands with hearts, yarn, scissors, and a pen. it's just cute. So of course it was a, um, I got a hand, original hand stamp made from my artwork. Of course I had to stamp it in pink, right? So this is the actual this is what you will get if you ordered the herringbone mini kit this is how your kit will come and so i shared this sweet little um i don't want to show you the inside i want there to be some surprise but the inside's pretty fabulous um and it's already in here this is my i had to make sure i had the right size okay so the moral of the story is this is today's last giveaway is I have and like I said I do have a couple extra kits ready to go so you can go and grab one unless you want to take your chance of winning you totally can but use the word kit in your comment down below and um, we'll enter in so this one I need to ship out pretty quick so if you win next Friday and get your kit out with the kit we're doing a make along class um, via a live YouTube like class I've got multiple cameras set up. I've been working on testing technology, right? We're in that technology hat. Actually, thankfully, my dad is figuring it out for, for me because I don't know. <laughs> but the switchers and the technology. And so the goal is we're going to have multiple cameras and we're going to sew it. Like when I did the prototype, I've made a prototype and then I made another prototype. I made it in less than a half an hour. Now, of course, I've 
made half a dozen of them already. So I don't expect us to make it in there. I have a blocked two hour block for the make along on April 27th. Anyway, there's lots of details down below if you want to click through. So this is the last giveaway kit. That's exciting. So I do want to, nope, I'm not going to show you that. That's the essentials kit. There's not that many of those left. Um, but I also don't want to spoil and show you what it looks like because it's also cute too. Um, so that's the giveaways. So that's exciting. Now let's switch gears and I'll show you some knitting fun, shall we? Knitting fun number one is in my extra large tulip pink drawstring bag. So I showed you guys this. Oh, I also told you guys about, so I love to do polls and like phone of friends on Instagram between the weeks. I like to talk to you guys more than just on Fridays, right? So I try to interact on Instagram, either in stories and in posts. So at some point um, over the weekend, I showed you guys this. This was my swatch from swatch number one, I should call it. Now I always label my swatches so that years from now, I'll remember what this was. This is the Azucena sweater. And I used a US size six. My gauge is 22. And this is the beautiful paper cranes yarn, fingering weight held with her mohair. And we talked all about this last year or last week. So this was the swatch I showed you. Now the pickle was, now we talked about it briefly, is that the chart is, or the pattern. Do I have a picture? Yes. Okay, so you keep it. And then I keep my handy dandy pen because you might have to make lots of notes for this one so the azucena sweater Azu, yeah i'm butchering it i'm sure um beautiful sweater so this is my pens that i just keep in my bag right to to make all my notes so this is the sweater so we talked about this last week in that the gauge the pattern gauge is 21. now i just told you that my gauge swatch was 22. now if you're new to knitting and I'm relatively new. This is going to be hopefully sweater number three that comes off the needles. Now, we did talk about sweater number three that I started, which was my purple one. And Megan, the Seattle Citrus, she used the sweetest thing. She's like, oh, send me pictures. I'll help you figure out what's wrong with it. Well, I didn't see that message till after I had already... The, real, the moral of the story is I had already figured out what was wrong with it. And I screwed it up way back at the neck. And so there was no coming back. And so I also spent multiple hours this this past weekend frogging a sweater which was my purple sweater my sestari sheep um wool sheep farm wool sweater anyway this hopefully is my third sweater to actually get off the needles but it's got to get on the needles first right so this was gauge 22 and i was like okay Let's just see if I go up. I'm a very tight knitter. And so I use, and I know that. And um, so I was like, okay, let me just go up a gauge, go up a needle size and see what that is. So I did a second gauge swatch. Listen, if you're going to spend 200 hours, I don't even know. I don't even want a clock. It doesn't matter. It's it's the process. I love the process. So it doesn't matter. I don't, it doesn't matter. But the moral of the story is, a ton if you're going to spend a ton of hours knitting a sweater it's it's worth the extra hour or night or day to do another gauge swatch i feel to just set myself up for success i preach that i don't preach that. i tell you guys that all the time when we did the bingy along set yourself up for success do the pre-work it's kind of like that measure three times before you cut once measure twice that's good i like to measure three times before i cut just because, right? So I did another gauge swatch is the more the moral of the story. So there are two colors in the sweater. And so I was like, well, I'll do it on the other one. It's beautiful. The yarn is gorgeous. Um, Paper Grains yarn again. It's her mohair. I talked about her having a sweater kit. You can see I dropped a stitch right there in the middle. Um, but that's okay. It was a swatch and I knew I did it and it wasn't worth me going back. So um, beautiful beautiful yarn like i said i went up a needle size so this is a us seven the chart calls for a six this was a seven so my gauge swatch is a 20. so close so i have a 20 and a 22. i needed a 21. okay so that's when i reached out to my instagram phone to friends and said 
help, help, help. SOS knitters help, help me do the things. Ah, you guys are so awesome. So many of my friends replied back to me with expert knitting advice. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for the opportunity to reach out to all these beautiful, fantastically, wonderfully tal talented knitters who have been doing this way longer than I have. And they have, they're free flowing with their information and so giving and with the help. And like I said, Megan gave me this beautiful story uh, of helping me figure it out. So the good news is, the good news is I have cast on. Yay. Do you want to know what I decided? Okay. So, um, what I have decided is I am going, I like the fabric of the red better. It's just not quite as the, you know, bigger needles made bitter, openy, gagey, right? So I liked the fabric that the US six made better. It was just a little tighter. I mean, this is not a summer sweater, so it doesn't need to be open and airy. So, I mean, it's, you know, mohair and wool. So, and cashmere, beautiful. So I liked the 22, I liked this, this gauge better. So what I ended up doing is taking into consideration the super wash, this is super wash yarn, which always grows, no doubt, always grows. And then I stayed my size, the positive ease, the moral of the story is I cast it on with the US six stayed at my size but my size the ease is a two to four inch ease the size i cast it on was a four inch ease so going to my 22 gauge versus my 21 gauge it's actually a one point math it actually loses 1.7 inches at the at the widest part of the sweater which is right here at the chestal area um which is fine because it takes me down to a two inch positive ease. So the math is perfect. More of the story. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So I have cast it on. Oh, so beautiful. Like I said, this is the gorgeous paper cranes yarn. First of all, I love a good yarn cake. Oh, these are the colors I'm working on now. So I am just working on the, the ribbing. I'm almost to color work. Like, I think I have two more rows. I have done short row. Um, so you can see that it's shorter in the front. So it does have a short row um, back shaping situation, which is so fun. I love a good short row. Easy. Not hard. Easy stretch, but not hard. Um, as long as you just pay attention, make tons of notes, which is why there's a dedicated handmade Happiness is handmade. There's a dedicated pen, and it's pink because it's better. Um, a dedicated pen in this bag. Anyway, so that's my cast on. So I'm to the point where there's a couple more rounds where I have to super pay attention. So I had to dedicate some time on that. But I got her casted on. That's so exciting. Um, Ashley from Paper Cranes Yarns is actually knit in the exact same colorway. She had some colors. I think they're all sold out now of her sweater kits. But we are knitting twinsy sweaters, and so we've already decided that next year when we're when we're at market, she's gonna she's doing um she's doing a stitch along with Sarah. She's doing her first stitch along yarn shop down in Alabama. Paper Cranes. She's adorable, the sweetest thing, and so she is dabbling into the world of cross stitch. Sarah, handmade by Sarah W, lives like in her town, down her town, around the corner. They are friends. It's adorable. They are doing their first stitch along. It's botanical, something or other. It's fantastic. Anyway, go to check her out. Follow her. Do all the things. We're gonna be twinsies at market next year in our Azunza sweaters, Azusina sweaters. And so I'm super excited about it, but step one, casting on. So that was sweater number one. Like I said, I think if I have more knitting this week than I do stitching, it's just gonna happen. Um, I won't spend too much time cause I showed you guys number one last week, but I got number two off the needles. Who am I? I'm somebody with two socks. <laughs> okay, but I just do, I do wanna tell you a story. I am going to geek out on the math associated with sock yarn and sock knitting. Little story. So I should have brought my other balls. 
And I told you, I kind of dabbled in this last week in that I, this was a hundred skein, hundred gram skein of mustache yarn. Well, it comes, it's self-striping yarn. It's adorable. I don't know, remember the colorway, but then I went to my fingering, which I also am in love with. I think I'm going to wind uh, I'm, I'm going to wind a fingering. I'm going to have a fingering. I'm going to have a mini skein fingering weight winding party with myself this weekend. Maybe we'll see because this is how much I have left. Okay. So remember I did, like I said, the mustache yarn. This is the number. This is me geeking out on numbers a little bit. And then I went and I grabbed a 20 gram mini skein that I thought would be perfect that coordinated for the cuff, heel, and toe, right? So I did a 15 row cuff, the Shelly's heel. Okay, so you guys have asked me, you want me to do a Shelly's heel tutorial. Okay, well, this is Shelly's heel, so I'm gonna have to get Shelly to do it. But um, it's TBD. We are definitely in the works talking about it. I've done Shelly's heel four times. Every time it gets a little easier, I'm almost to the point where I remember what I'm doing. I made myself a little cheat chart, cheat sheet, cheat sheet chart. Wow. Um, in Excel, because I'm a goober, because you got to count 11 rows down and then like 11 to zero and then zero to 11. And, and it, I'm one of those pick up, put down type knitters. And I was like, I have no idea where I'm going to be. I made a chart because I'm a goober. Um, so I kind of like it. <laughs> so I definitely want to be able to make that something you guys can sh um, use because I think it's helpful. So yes, we're going to be doing Shelly's heels. TBD on that, but it's coming soon. Um, the moral of the story is, so, right? So 15 row, Shelly's heel, and then the toe. And this was a 20 gram mini. Now, last week, before I had started, actually I had started, no, before I had started, um, I had measured it and I had 12 grams left. Well, I measured it again, now that I'm done, and so I had three grams left. So it was nine grams to do what I did. The Heel, toe, cuff. Perfect. So 20 gram mini. It's a little bit of yarn chicken if I messed up, but I did it, so we're fine. So that's easy peasy. Okay, so that's nine grams of contrast color. Well, and then I went and weighed the sock. I love a good kitchen scale, right? So you went and I got my kitchen scale. So each sock is 29 grams. So that means for, this is a 40 row um, leg. So it's not a super tall stock. It's like a mid mid crew. It's taller than an ankle sock. I, I think it's going to be perfect. I'll show you guys. I'll take a picture um, and show you guys the height on my actual foot. And I have a, you know, nine and a half inch foot or I wear in a size nine and a half. So anyway, um, so it's a, a good, it's a generous size woman's foot, um, I think. And I can get 29 grams. So it's only 20 grams of main color. Now that's right on the money. So using a 20 gram mini skein for each sock would be kind of scary. But I'm so excited about the math and the opportunity. So you don't really need 100 gram, at least I don't, to make myself just a plethora of socks. I might be making a notebook that has to do with all the numbers and the math associated with knitting and, and maximizing. I mean, because I have enough of this mustache yarn, so I only use 20, 20, 40. So I only use 40 grams of the 100. So I have another 60 grams. I should have weighed it, but I'm pretty sure that the one cake I was 30 grams. So yeah, I have 60 grams of this self striping so I can make a big old sock to match out of one skein of 100 gram sock. <gasps> Listen, you can get a lot of socks out of that in comparison to sweater knitting. So let's just tangent for just a minute. Now, if you remember the trauma, the it wasn't traumatic. <laughs> really, it's yarn haul. It's not traumatic. That was a stretch. But the trauma of my petite knit lion sweater, right? Yes. And I opened it live and I was like, in my mind going to be fabulous. It's a navy sweater with pink stripes. Okay. And I opened, remember, I opened my gorgeous Miss Babs yarn. 
And this was the pink. I remember. This doesn't speak pink to me. This speaks purple. This is this is purple magenta. I wanted this is the one I pulled. Pink. That's what I wanted, right? Okay. And then not this one. It's close. I know. I know. Like, listen, your guys are like, really? But again, circling back on the spending 200 zillion, we're not counting. Lots of hours of time to knit this beautiful sweater. I'm going to take the time to find the right material for it to be what I want. So after yesterday, after last week's video, I did it again. And I haven't opened it yet again. So <laughs> I didn't go back and watch last week's video to see like, was I nice about when I was my disappointed face? Did I have a good poker face? Probably not. But here we are. We're going to open it again. And I did not open it. I went and placed another order with Miss Babs. Now, I had a couple comments that were great. There's somebody said the hot to trot. She has. I'm super excited about this yarn. Worst case, I'm going to figure out something great to do with it. I'm adding to my stash. Um, beautiful, beautiful yarn. All the things. She ships super quick, obviously. So I ordered this after last Friday's video. And it either got here Wednesday or Thursday. So in time, less than a week, right? And where's she? She's in Tennessee. I'm in Virginia. Okay, so here we go. So, yes, I am one of those people that, you know... This, the free, okay, oh, hold on. I won't look without you. Um, the threshold to get free shipping always gets me. <laughs> it really does. I went on there looking for one color. Somebody recommended Hot to Trot, which looked like it was on the computer, looked like it was the exact right pink I wanted. She didn't have it. As an indie dyer, you know, the, the colors, the availability, the, the stock changes all the time. So I just had to go with what there was. Now, the thing is, is I ordered two different colors, two different possible pinks. Problem number one, I did order one of them in her jumbo. So her big skeins, I don't know what she calls these things. They're basically like jumbo skeins. It's, 200, it's 560 yards, 225 grams. So if you're, you know, knitting is usually 100 grams. For the lion sweater, for the size I needed, I need 250 yards of contrast color. So the hot pink. Oh no. Never mind. That's not what I did. <laughs> I totally forgot what I did. I ordered a second one of these. Yes. Because I love this color. I think it's a beautiful color. It'll look perfect as its own thing. Um, and now I have 11, 1120 yards. So I have a sweater's quantity almost if I add an accent or a stripe or a this or a that or a tiny little crop sweater, which is not really flattering to a 48 year old. I don't have a crop sweater type of anyway, but I ordered the second one. So that's what I did because I got sucked into the, the free shipping. Okay, so. And then I'm knitting with the mohair with the paper cranes thing. And she has this beautiful mohair. And I'm like, well, let's just add mohair to everything, shall we? Now, see, this would be fantastic. Now, they only had one aubergine. That would be a very pretty mohair to be held with that. Am I placing a third order with Miss Babs? Oh, heavens to Betsy. So this is 435 yards of kid mohair. TBD, TBD. But then I got this beautiful blue. Because there'll be extra of this to make. So my thinking was to make one of those small fry scarves. That's why I got this. Now I remember. I need to make notes. I got the mohair because I thought to make the small fry scarf, which is the pattern I showed you guys last week. I'm going to add a mohair to a fingering weight, make small fry scarves for everybody. And it's going to be great. And I was like, well, of course, you know, pink and blue is just and all the things. Okay. Okay. You ready? Mm. 
that is it. <laughs> now, now I remember 200 yards. That's the pickle. This was a color called muchness. And there was one, one 200 yard skein. But I need 250 for that size. But if I go down a size, so that's the extra large. You guys don't want to sit here and watch me do math, but if I go down, that's the extra large. Bus circumference, where's the positive ease suggestion? Bus circumference, I'm gonna have to see. I know that's what I decided. I went ahead and I was like, forget it. I'll just go down to the large and it'll just be more of a fitted, which is not really that fitted because it's still a four, four and a half inch positive ease. Plus I allow for super watch growth. I should be good to go. 400. We're going to do the large. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yay! And so with the large size, I only need 200 yards of the contrast color. Oh my gosh. I will be totally knitting the swatch for this today, tonight. I might play hooky and call it. No, I won't. But oh my gosh, this this is the perfect pink called Muchness. So dark persistence and Muchness. This is my lion sweater. I'm so excited. I can hardly wait. The other one might go pause. Okay. Wasn't that fun? I love opening live. I'm just glad this one worked out more better. This is going to be a gorgeous sweater. Another one. Sweaters for days. Um, One other thing I wanted to show you. I'm not going to show you to her. Just kidding. I'm going to wait. And it's right here. But it's not finished. It's a it's a whip. It's really awesome. But I'm going to save it for next week. Because I'm hoping that next week it'll be a finish. I'll spoiler. I'll spoiler for you. These are crumb, crumb panels. Crumb panels that I made from the crumbs left over from my herringbone kit made two panels any guesses what what i'm gonna make with these hint okay that's it that's it okay Floss tube friday episode 100 is complete so i hope you had a fabulous time i i can't wait for the next 100 um, so much fun. So many things ahead on the list for fun here in 2024 with Tiger Lily. 2025, I've already got like in the pencil stages of planning. It's going to be fantastic. So if you don't already subscribe, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel and join me and the Tiger Lily family here on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Patreon. We're having all the fun in all the places. So until next time, friends, I wish you Lots of happy stitches, lots of qu happy quilting and knitting and making all the things. And until next Friday, friends, make sure you enter into the giveaways, right? Use the word down below and do all the things because I, I can't wait to give all these things away. So just know that I love you guys so much and I appreciate the stitching community. I'm so excited to be here and I can't wait for the next hundred. So until next time, friends, happy stitching. <laughs>